everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Yellowtail Talks Tech. I'm Rob Coble. I'll be hosting Yellowtail Talks Tech. Uh, I'm also the career success manager here at Yellowtail, and um, welcome. We're really excited to have this podcast and to um, bring you at least one episode per month. Our goal here is to kind of show you that um, not only is the tech world an exciting place to make a career, but it's also something that you can do. You can do it going through our program with no experience to start and be able to, in around a six-month period, uh, have the tools that it takes to, um, uh, to do a couple of things. Uh, our forte is Linux for Jobs. We also do. Uh, uh, we also have a program that will take you to um, through uh, AWS cloud uh, cloud engineering. And man, we're going to bring a lot of guests in. We're going to have uh, former students, maybe some current students. We're going to have some industry veterans, some recruiters, some hiring managers, people to give you a sense of what it's like a day in the life of the tech world. And, um, you know, there's, there's really no other way to start off a, uh, a, a, a Yellowtail podcast without bringing in our fearless leader and co-founder, Juby. I'm going to say, I'm going to try to get it right again here now, Juby Vilsius. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Rob. All right, you actually, again. so... Man, I'm glad that we're finally getting a, an opportunity to sit down and talk here, man. Um, you know, I've been with you guys for about six months now and uh, absolutely not only love what you're doing, the commitment that you have to the students, um, but man, you know, having worked in a lot of various places, um, the the students here are pretty hardcore, man. They like take it seriously and they uh, they they suit up and show up. So. Um, I believe in the program, and I'm interested to find out from you a little bit more about its origins. What prompt? Well, let's start with this. Why don't you introduce yourself and then give me a little bit of uh, of your background and what prompted you to start Yellowtail Tech? Um, first of all, I can't believe it's been already six months since you uh, you started with us, Rob. It's crazy. I know, man. Is that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, the way we started uh, is not like most other um, programs or training um, centers, because um, we didn't, first of all, of course, I have a background in management information system. I love helping people. I've helped in my career. I've helped other people get into it, the industry, mentor them. But uh I actually didn't have the plan of going full time and helping people break into IT. So what, the way it happened is that I found myself helping my good friends, my family member, my cousins, my in-laws break into the industry. And then my wife and I, one day were sitting and we're like, man, we are doing this so well. Uh, we are finding success in helping people. Why don't we formalize? It? Hmm. So that's actually how it started. Wow! It didn't start with a business plan where I sat uh, with uh, my wife, who's the co-founder, and say, "Okay, this is how we're going to make it happen." It actually took two years to actually form the business plan. In that two years, we were helping friends and family. We were also, um, without realizing it, fine tuning the process of actually helping people in a more streamlined way. And um, in 2000, so basically between 2014 and 16, we were helping people. We, I had other businesses that, uh, that were um, going on in parallel and I was helping people, including my wife, because um, her prior background was in um, social science. She's a social scientist. She's had uh, 10 years of experience in a different a career and she's like, well, while you're helping these people, uh, I should be one of the the person you help change career uh, because I think I'm tired of what I'm doing, and that happens to uh, a lot of people, including you, Rob. Uh, yeah. You could also talk about how you had uh, a career transition, but she yeah. wanted to do a transition, 
And then as I help her transition and we realize, hey, we have a product. And this is where we formalize it from 2014 to 2016. Is more. It was more um, informal and helping people. More and more people were um, were coming to us to get help. Um, and then in 2016, we formalized it. We were like, gotcha. okay, we're gonna go into business. We're gonna make this uh, bigger. But one thing we're gonna do is focusing on people with absolutely no IT background for for a few reasons. First, because this is where we saw the need and the niche. And most importantly, we looked around. There were no other um, offering that was specifically designing products and programs for people with no IT back. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you go in other places. Um, they they accept people with no IT background, but they don't specifically design program for people with no IT background, which is what I think makes us different. Yeah. So that's how that's how it started, you see. Wow, yeah. so that's that's cool, man. You, you've been going for um geez, what about eight years in total then? Yeah. Um it, 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 it that you focused in on two programs, uh the Amazon web service yes. and Linux, Linux. uh mm-hmm. specifically. Can you talk a little bit about that? Why did you choose those two programs? Well, it's interesting. Uh, the f- first of all, we um, for a while we only um, focused on Linux. Um, we wanted to be a place where you come in and you are sure you are dealing with experts, with subject matter experts. So what I looked around again and I saw is that most training centers they are trying to appeal to everyone and everything and every uh, layers. That, uh, that exists out there. And I said, I'm going to go into this business. I'm going to be the best person who helps you break into the industry as a Linux system administrator. Uh, we, we're going to go deep. We're going to be the subject matter expert. We're going to be the best person in the business that does that. And it, it actually worked. So that's why we only had a Linux system administration. Our program called is called Linux for Jobs for a while. And then we realized that the next natural step is AWS for a few reasons. First, AWS as a cloud offering is built 100% on Linux. And second, cloud is the biggest thing going on right now. Yeah. So we found that it, it kept us in our realm of expertise while giving something else, while offering a second product to the market. Nice. So that's why we specifically focus on uh, um, Linux and AWS. So, so that, that's that's really it. Uh, that, nothing else, really. Yeah. Um, but we don't plan on having too many programs. We plan on focusing uh, uh, on a few programs, spend more time iteratively improving and fine-tuning the program and the results we get uh, uh, with our students than trying to uh, um, appeal to everyone yeah. out there. Yeah, I think that's smart. You know, it's like uh, some some uh, companies tend to be kind of like the jack of all trades, master of none kind of uh, philosophy. And uh, it's kind of cool to know that, uh, you know, you're working with something that you're committed to and it's not going to change overnight into something else. Um, I like what you said about the cloud too, man, because I I was just thinking about um, the last time I went to buy a computer and, um, you know, I had this, I had a good salesman that was asking me all these questions about, you know, how I use my computer and everything. And it dawned on me, you know, like the first couple of computers that I ever bought, it was like, you wanted memory, man, you needed a lot of memory so you could put a lot of stuff on there. And now I'm thinking I want speed. That's all I need is speed because everything's on the cloud, man. All the music I listen to, most of my pictures, all of that stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely kind of seems to be the future and uh, seems to be a really cool extension on top of the Linux program. Yeah. And and also to to go back to the cloud, um, 
The, the other reason why we chose AWS specifically, because there are a few big players in the industry. There's IBM, there's Microsoft with Azure, there is, of course, AWS, there is Alibaba, and a few others uh, that are big players. But we specifically went with AWS because it's the, uh, um, the cloud offering that first. Uh, as I said before, is completely on um, runs on Linux. But second, it's the biggest. Mm. It's, the, it's the biggest in terms of um, customers, in terms of uh, uh, innovation, in terms of market share, in terms of product they offer. So when we train someone on AWS, they are more likely to be able to get entry-level jobs. Not that there are, are jobs with Azure or IBM, but we are trying to give our students the more the most likely to um, be able to break into industry and the uh, uh, to be able to break into the industry with limited experience. So that's gotcha. another reason why we went with specifically with AWS. Makes sense, man. So I noticed, you know, in in talking with you now, um, you know, you kind of. You know, you haven't once referred to Yellowtail as a boot camp. Uh, you kind of seem to shy away from calling it a boot camp. You've mentioned the program, uh, you know, and different things like that. Why is that? Yes, because we position ourselves as not a boot camp, as anti boot camp, because the boot camp implies a few things that we don't quite agree with. The boot camp implies uh, something that's fast, that's rushed that's short in length, and our programs are everything but that. Um, most boot camp, they run for a few weeks to up to uh, three months. Our commitment to our students is at least nine months uh, uh, for, uh, um, for Linux for jobs and at least 11 months for AW, uh, AWS for jobs. So we are not uh, a boot camp because we intentionally, because of the, the um, the people we chose to serve, with our, which are people with no IT background, we understand that the program needs to be at a slower pace. It needs to have more hands-on support. And this is usually not what you find in a bootcamp. Yeah. So that's why we shy away from calling ourselves a bootcamp because we don't feel that we are. Yeah. Uh, um, and we don't even uh, um, think that it's a good, uh, it's an interesting proposition. And um, a few other reasons is that boot camps, they are also appealing, granted, they are appealing to what uh, um, people say they want. They want to do things fast. They want to come in for two weeks or two months and get a job. And we don't think that's doable, feasible, or that usually happens. So we also don't want to get in a position where we're selling a, a, a something, we're selling a promise that we 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 are, we, we are sure uh, doesn't make uh, sense or we cannot yeah. deliver on. And you know what? I mean, there are good boot camps out there, and you know most of them tend to be kind of focusing on more of the coding and, and different things like that. Um, so I don't want to I don't want to leave the impression that there's not a place. But oh, no. at the same time, I love the philosophy where, you know, you're again, it kind of goes back to what you said earlier, where you're really honing in on those, you know, those two things. You've got two programs. You're focusing on being the best at those two programs and, you know, not worrying so much about, you know, we, we don't need to bring coding in and we don't need to bring graphic arts in and things like that. <laughs> this is what we do. And, and also, I want to uh, add something. There are great boot camps. I, I agree. But a great boot camp, it's tricky for them to get the result they, uh, they, they, they advertise with people with no IT background. Yeah. You see what I mean? Because it just takes more time. It takes sure. more time for, 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 you, for you to build someone from scratch to the, found, uh, to the right foundational knowledge. So the boot camps, they are great. If you come in with a baseline that's that's higher than most, if, gotcha. if you only are recruiting people that are super quick with computers that that you know um, had some uh, uh, um, computer background of sorts before, yes, 
a bootcamp format does the job. But because we specifically focus on people with no IT background, a bootcamp format would not work. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking about kind of people that are thinking uh, the types of people that would benefit from the different programs and everything. What, in your opinion, do you feel makes uh, somebody a good candidate for the IT world? Yes. Um, I get that a lot. And uh, believe it or not, and tonight I'm going to uh, um, uh, lead a webinar um, that, that talks about that. It, it has nothing to do with um, how much they love computers. It has nothing to do with how much, com- uh, how much they've interacted with computers in the past. It has to do with how much they want a change. It has to do with how are they typically uh, um, a high performer. And what we, what we mean by that is ha- are, are they are able to come in, uh, um, take on a new challenge, and complete it? You know, these are the questions we help them answer. Why? Find the why of why you're trying to uh, change uh, um, careers. Yeah. Uh, understand how committed you are to the process because one thing we don't sell is easy. We don't, we never claim this is an easy process. We claim it's doable. You, we claim that you're going to get the support you need. You, we claim we have a process that's very well laid out to support you, but it's not easy. Yeah. So you have to bring in the commitment. You have to bring in the time. You have to have time. Yeah. You see, so- you have to want it. But you don't need to have any computer background or so on. So gotcha. this is what we, we typically see. So your background, your prior background has absolutely, and I mean, there's zero correlation between what you've done in the past and breaking into IT, you see? And, you're, uh, and, and you're, from your point of view, are there certain attributes that, um, uh, that help people more so than others in this world? Yes. Um, how quick uh, how how quick you are to absorb new material in general, you know, at IT or any anything. The um, ability to learn. The ability the ability to learn because and the willingness gonna, to learn. <laughs> yeah, because um, most believe it or not, most people who come, they they spend more time figuring out how they're gonna pay for this than how they're gonna put in the work clear out the space for the to 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 get the time necessary to to actually do this. So this is one thing we try our enrollment advisors focus on on trying to make sure we figure out which uh what's the, um you have the right motivation, you have the right um uh, um amount of time to put into this besides the the financing bit yeah. of the of the of, of the of, of the I had the, um I interviewed one of our graduates, Jimmy Iwati, yesterday, and he uh, he talked to me about his plan when he enrolled and everything. And I, I really admired it a lot because he said, you know, I, I I even went to my wife and told her, you know, for the next six, however many months, the hours of seven to nine are off limits. I'm going to yeah. be doing this. And you know, this is kind of a pain of dues type situation. It won't always be like this. Um, yes. But I just really admired how he came to it with a plan. And and that's one of the things that I say a lot too, you know. Um, yeah, you can have the biggest dreams in the world, but if you don't have a plan, yeah. then they're going to be a lot harder to accomplish. Yeah, I have so many examples like that. Uh, I remember uh, one of our um, um, students came to me and said, Juby, I'm ready to enroll. And I just quit my job. I talked to my wife. I told her that's what I want to do. And I quit my job yesterday. So now I'm enrolling. I'm like, usually we do this after we get the job. He's like, no, <laughs> uh, I'm ready. I'm going to make this work. Yeah. And he actually did. I, yeah, I mean, example. if you know, you know, you know, I mean, I've, exactly. I've, I've had a few people as well that I've spoken to now that um, uh, were just miserable you know, and, um, you know, that's kind of my story too. You know, we talked about that briefly at the beginning, you know, it's like I had worked in music for, uh, 20 some years and just finally it was like, 
I need something different. And when I kind of fell into doing what I do and in the tech and, and gaming world and everything, it was a brand new world to me. And um, I think one of the things that makes it exciting for a lot of people is the fact that it is constantly changing. You know, the, the technology that you're working with today Oh, yeah. be obsolete probably in five years and we'll all be doing something else. So you, you've got to stay on top of it and you've got to be willing to, you know, kind of change your ways a little bit. Yeah. That's one question. Also, you asked what are the attributes um, that are important um, uh, for to break into the industry is to be willing and to understand that you're going to always be in a learning mode. Yeah, uh, like one of our best and instructor, um, his his tagline is always learning. Yeah, if you go, uh, uh, um, if you go into this industry with that mindset, you'll be gold. You'll be okay. You'll be doing great. But if you come into the, this industry and you just want the least amount of uh, of of knowledge, the least amount of uh, of training to go do the least in the uh, job market. You're gonna be in trouble because yeah. things, things get uh, things change, and you have to be able to adapt. To you have to not only be able to, but you have to be happy to learn new things. You have to be into learning new things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, somebody said once, you know, if if you're gonna be in this business, you have to understand that you're nothing more than a full time student for the rest of yes. your life. Yes, yes. And, uh, but then and for it, some people, that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. See? Absolutely. But, uh, but for others, it's overwhelming. You see, yeah. it's like, I just want to know what I'm doing and then stop learning and just deliver. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if it's the, the attitude you have, probably another, you know, um, another kind of job would be better suited. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that's a good point. I mean, it's not for everybody. Um, if you're a taskmaster, you know, there are people that just like to come in in the morning and they have their list. This is what you need to do today. Once you get it done, you go home. Um, that's definitely not the life you're going to find in it. I mean, I think the number one thing that I hear from our students about why they love the world of it is, um, uh, that they are, it's, it's constantly changing and the problem solving aspect of what they do, you know, um, every problem, even if, yeah, even if it's the, you know, the same problem, you're setting up a server or something like that, you're constantly running into roadblocks that are going to be different every time based on the situation. So being able to think on your feet, being able to be resourceful and find the answers is probably as important as actually already knowing the answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, you know, tell us there, tell me and, and our listeners a little bit about, you know, what our students go through during that first six months, how the program is laid out. Um, I know you can't go into, you know, a lot of specifics. We would be here all night, but, um, <laughs> you know, so they're basically going through, um, you know, a structured class. It's not just a bunch of videos to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, one thing we insist on is having, uh, hybrid format. This is what we've uh, uh, realized works best. Meaning, they have some uh, some material, mostly, and I mean mostly videos. We insist on that because this is um, the format uh, um, we realize that students absorb the the fastest. They have to go through some uh, videos um, on their own and then show up to class. Gotcha. We we realize that's the the best hybrid. Kind of gets uh, them prepped way. for the live session. Exactly. That way, there are more intelligent questions coming out of the live session. There are some uh, more engagement happening happening in the live session, and um, things can move faster. So that's the first uh, uh, thing you're going to see in our, our program. It's a hybrid format of um, pre-work and live lectures. Um in terms of how we stack the program, we all um, all of our programs start with IT fundamentals and networking. 
because um, three years ago, we decided to add that because we were more and more moving away from the typical offering. The typical offering just tries to train you on the least amount of, of, of IT knowledge that you need to go and get a job. And we realized that it doesn't uh, help the student on the long run. So now we insist on giving you the proper IT fundamental and networking because uh, this is these knowledge, this knowledge you're gonna you're gonna use it at any point, anywhere you go. It's kind of the foundation. To, yeah, we we focus now a little more on building that uh, that strong foundation, and then we move you either in, in, uh, in the Linux track or AWS, whichever one uh, you want, but. Either track starts with Linux anyway, okay? Because even if you go the AWS route, we build uh, your Linux knowledge. Uh, this is also a, 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 a big difference between our offering and most. Uh, when you go uh, and most other places, they jump straight into cloud computing because this is what you came to learn. Yeah. But um, it's just like, uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you've seen Karate Kid. When you do a lot of wax on, wax off, you're not sure why you're doing it, but (laughs) they tell you it's important. It's the same thing. When you're going uh, into um, cloud computing, you need to understand networking and understand Linux very well. Gotcha. Because cloud computing is just an abstraction of a real operating system that's typically a Linux operating system. So if you are working on an abstraction on, a, on an extract, uh, abstraction of a thing, you should know what the thing itself is, you see, which is the operating system. So that's why we make sure you have the Linux foundational knowledge, even if you come to us for cloud computing knowledge. Yeah. And from there, we have a capstone. Uh, both of our programs have a, a certification capstone, which is uh, in, a, in the Linux portion. It's a Red Hat uh, um, certified system administration administrator, and the AWS portion is the AWS um, SysOps certification. So um, we cho- we carefully chose these two certification because of their weight on the on the um, on the job market because of how important they are. And from there, uh, we invite you to join uh, a, an internship. This is where you're going to be solving real tickets on real servers from a real company so you can get the hands on. Because nice. this is typically the catch-22 you see. You need a job to get the experience, but wherever do you get the experience if you never got a job in the industry? So we help you um, uh, break that uh, cycle, uh, that catch-22. And of course... Along the way, uh, you you get to work with uh, Rob to get you up to speed to get ready, you know, for for the job market. So that's that's, that's everybody's highlight, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's true because uh, it doesn't matter how great the training is. It doesn't matter how many certifications you have. If you're if you don't know how to present yourself, how to sell yourself, how to um, impose yourself in a and in, in an interview, um, the knowledge really doesn't matter. The knowledge yeah. itself uh, doesn't really matter. Yeah. And and you know, I, I like how it's done too. I mean, the the my introduction to students comes at the beginning of their their more hands on training and everything. But the focus is really put on getting that hands on training before they actually move into. Um, where we start building resumes and things like that. And I think one of the things that I really like about our program too is um, the mock interview process. And uh, you know, if, if, if somebody's listening and they're not familiar with this, um, we basically uh, offer up to three mock interviews um, in a very realistic type situation. And I have to say it's been, in many cases, very interesting to watch the progress or the metamorphosis from interview one to interview three with some of the people. And not just from a technical point of view, it's good to see that they're building their confidence along the way. They're able to really explain and talk more about 
the specific tools that they're they're mm-hmm. now working with and, and and understanding them. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And also um, the way I see it is it it's e- it's better and easier to make the mistakes with us because yeah. typically what happens is we go to a uh, to an interview and you do either great or you do very badly but you have no feedback. They just say tell you thank you for your time and we will let you know if you move to the next step or if you get the job. But in the mock interview it's the same grueling answer, the same environment, but the only difference is you get feedback on which you you get to build. Yeah. So um, that's that's why we, uh, we uh, it's very important and it's vital. It's a vital part of the of the of, of the process. That's there's a lot of talk right now in the industry too from the recruiters and everything that um, you know there are some companies that are out there that are putting people through these extremely lengthy interview processes, you know, like five different interviews with teams and different levels of management, and then basically give them a yes or a no at the end. And if they give them the no, um, you know, there's a lot of people saying now, look, if you put somebody through that much, you owe them some sort of explanation as to, you know, why they didn't get chosen or give them some feedback, something to build on. And, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes that's the hard part of the job when you got to be really honest with somebody about it. But again, that's how they improve. And um, so far, my experience has been, you know, that the the students that we've had are very willing to hear it, you know. And oh yeah, yeah, and that's part of it, you know. Yeah, especially in a friendly environment where you know everyone is cheering for you. Yeah, it's, it's easier. It makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah, with um, the way that they're set up in cohorts uh, as well, it seems to be that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of peer, uh, excuse me, a lot of peer uh, support going on within the cohorts, uh, study groups that are kind of piling up and stuff like that. So it definitely is, even for an online program, a very hands-on type program. Yeah, and also this is. The other reason why we insisted insisted on keeping the cohort format, where you have a batch of people who start and finish at the same time, uh, camar- uh, camaraderie builds, um, you get a- additional support from your peers, um, you know, study groups get, get uh, uh, formed organically. So this is all um, the the advantages of having a cohort format. Can you talk a little bit about the job market? I know that yeah. um, mm-hmm. there's there's always rumors, right? But I know that there's a lot of people saying that the, you know a lot of tech jobs are going away or what what yeah. is happening. I've found the opposite to be true. In fact, um, I recently read that the first six months of this year versus the same time period last year saw a 69% increase in, in actual jobs in the IT field. Yeah. And, and also um, when you talk about job in a very generic and broad term, it's very tricky to, to really understand what's going on. What's going away are the low level uh, repetitive type of IT jobs. But what we train for are for, uh, for um, specific uh, uh, niche type of knowledge. Being a Linux system administrator or an AWS cloud engineer is a very niche type of um, set of skills. In fact, throughout the past 15 years, there has always been a shortage of people well-trained at the level they need to fill in those jobs. So um, the jobs we're talking about that are going away, um, they, there are talks of recessions and, and firing and stuff like that. This is, it's not for uh, highly trained, certified uh, um, areas like Linux or AWS or, or many other uh, very um, deep knowledge type of uh, uh, training. So um, this, What's going on right now doesn't affect our, our students and their ability to get jobs. Yeah, awesome. 
I don't want to, I mean, we could go on all day here talking about so many different things, but um, I guess a, a good way to kind of wrap things up would be to talk a little bit about the future. What do you see for the future of Yellowtail Tech and uh, any changes, anything, uh, any announcements, anything you want to share? This is a, you know, we could have a big debut right here on the first episode, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, what 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 I see is um, us uh, work, um, looking at another um, program building because we are building a, a third program that's going to focus on a data center techs because this is another place where there's always more jobs than people ready to take them is uh, data center techs because because of the uh, boom of cloud computing. The, the the industry of data centers, uh, the, uh, for example, um, Amazon is growing. Um, AWS AWS is growing at a forty percent year over year. Wow! And this this is gonna keep happening as they uh, uh, as they predict for at least uh, the next five years. So what's happening is they have to build more data centers. So. Um, Data center techs who uh, uh, who understand Linux, who understand hardware, is becoming very very important. So this is the third program we're looking into building, and uh, launching still based very around soon. the the whole uh, core Linux uh, yes family of jobs, I guess for lack of a better term. Exactly. Yeah. So um, so that's what we're working on. We are excited um, and. Um, you know, on the verge of launching that. Right on. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, man, it's, um, it's been a fun six months for me. I'm glad that, um, we're getting an opportunity, um, to, to not only start this podcast, but, um, uh, for me to start getting a little bit more knowledge, even, you know, I always say I'm not the technical guy. So even like when we do the, uh, uh, the mock interviews, my, my standard answer is, um, I don't know if you were right or wrong on the technical parts, but you sounded like you knew what you were talking about. So <laughs> that's good. So, uh, but it has been pretty cool for me and, um, you know, kind of going back to the early part of our conversation. Um, I am one of those guys that, um, I can't be stagnant. I need to constantly be, stimulated with new things and and new ideas and and different things and i think after having spent all that time in the music industry that i did and then coming into um working with uh first games and then tech and everything that kind of rejuvenated me you know it really fired me up um so yeah it's it's pretty cool to see these things happening um i want to give you one last chance to address um uh, our listeners with, uh, uh, you know, any advice to those that are thinking of getting into the world of IT and, uh, you know, any final thoughts that you would like to offer? I always end with get into this industry for the right reasons, not for the potential amount of money you can make. Make sure you are willing to be challenged. Make sure you love learning new things. Make sure you have the commitment and time to put in the work. And um, if all that, all these are true, definitely I encourage you to um, get into the, the industry because there are so much to come in this industry. It's only getting started. Absolutely. Juby, I know you're a busy man. Thank you for taking some time with us today. Um, thank you. Thank you for you having know, it's, me. It, it's good to have you. It's good. To, I, I never get to spend any time with you, man, because you're always <laughs> like, busy doing stuff. So, um, for the listeners out there, uh, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you. And thank you for tuning in in the first place. Um, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on any of the, uh, the various formats that uh, you use for your podcasts, um, we're pretty easy to find. Just look for Yellowtail Talks Tech. And um, again, we're going to have some, some more episodes coming here shortly where we'll be hearing um, a little bit more in-depth kind of information on the day in the life, what it's like, you know, having people tell us about um, 
the, their specific job duties as a system admin um, or a cloud engineer. And um, I'm also really excited to get some recruiters and some hiring managers in here to really break down the uh, the hiring process and what uh, potential hires should expect in these interviews. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll even go as far as to break down, you know, what, what looks good on a resume, how to write a cover letter. We're going to cover it all, right? Or at least we're going to try. So um, again, Juby, thank you for being here and um, uh, feel free to leave comments in, uh, in the comment section here, or you can reach out to us. Uh, yellowtail.tech is the website. And I look forward to talking to you all again real soon. Thank you, Rob.